Welcome to the Bible Truth of Our Hymns. We're going to look at a hymn from a hymnal and check it to see if that hymn is biblically sound or not. There are stanzas in the hymns or words that are not correct from the Bible. We need to see that in a church where there are three types of people. Number one, they're saved and serving and loving the Lord. Number two, they're saved and they're worldly. And number three, lastly, they're lost men. Jesus said, every idle word shall man give an account. Are we proposing men and women in the church to sin by the hymns that are chosen? We will examine some, but not all, in this study. We will set a groundwork that the sin, that the sin, the hymn that we missed, you can be able to check for yourself and study yourself to see is this hymn that I like correct now not all the hymns that we're going to look at will be wrong many will be great and wonderful hymns and a few will have to be is it really proper will it glorify God or will it cause a man to sin The Biblical Truth of Our Hymns Today we're going to look at How Great Thou Art With a little warning that this hymn is copyrighted 1953 by Stuart Kane Hine Assigned to Man of Music Inc. Incorporated ASCAP 35255 Bruton Road Pacific City, Oregon 97135 Renew 1981, Man of Music, Inc., all rights reserved, used by permission. So I'm using the Code 107 of the Fair Use Act that we are trying to learn, to study what our hymns are, that we may know what we're singing. Could be, for some hymns, it could be criticized as wrong. This hymn is not. Um... So let's move on. I'm using this for, for learning. And what we see is, O oh, store God, O oh, great God, from which the English language hymn, How Great Thou Art, is derived. He came to Christ at the age of 19, Carl Broberg, and attended a Bible school in Chris and I Hump. The Christian hymn is based on the Swedish traditional melody and a poem written by Carl Gustav Barber. And I apologize on the names and misrepresentation of the words. How Great Thou Art was ranked second after Amazing Grace on a list of favorite hymns of all times in a survey by Today's Christian Magazine in 2001. Per Broberg's great nephew, Bud Broberg, Quote, my dad's story of his origin was that it was a paraphrase of Psalms 8 and was used in the underground church in Sweden in the late 1800s when the Baptists and mission friends were persecuted. Notice all the references to the book of Psalms. Paraphrasing, quoting, would be much better. Uh, the persecuted would end the quote and then notice all the references to the book of Psalms paraphrasing quoting would be much better one of the verses Stuart K. Hine added was the current third verse the fourth verse the fourth verse was another invocation of Stuart Hine which was added after the Second World War in 1948 Hine finished composing the final verse Hine finalized his English transition of the 1949 and published the final fourth verse version in his own Russian gospel magazine, Grace and Peace, that same year. A program note of Gazostavus Adolphus College, Minnesota. Concert tells listeners that Dr. J. Edward Orr, born 
15 January 1912 and died April 1987 of the Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California, discovered that the song being sung in a small village near Delali, India, by a choir of Naga tribe from Assam near Burma. I'm getting my mouth tied on this one. And the tradesmen had arranged the harmony themselves and a Mennonite missionary had transcribed it. Orr was impressed with the song of, which he introduced at the Forest Home Christian Conference Center in San Bernardino Mountains of Southern California, founded in 1938 by Henrietta Mears, born 23 October 1890 and died 19 March 1963. In the summer of 1959, Morrow's Publishing Company, Gospel Light Press, published Hines' version of the song in 1954. The first time How Great Thou Art was sung in the United States was the aforementioned Forest Home Conference in 1954. The Man of Music version of the song was popularized as the signature song in the 1950s Billy Graham Crusade. It was popularized by George Beverly Shee and Cliff Barrows during the Billy Graham Crusaders. Evangelist Billy Graham said, quote, The reason I like how great thou art is because it glorifies God. It turns the Christian's eyes towards God rather than upon themselves. I use it as often because it's such a God-glorifying, God-honoring song. Well, that's a remarkable statement. Cause, and... But one thing I'll back Billy Graham on is what he just said about this hymn. This is a wonderful, great hymn. I wish I could speak it all outside of copyright. I wish I could read the whole thing. But copyright. I don't like when the hymns are copyrighted. The King James Bible has not, has not been copyrighted. I can use all the King James verses that I want from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22. But when you've got a hymn that's copyrighted. I can't do much with it. And this is a wonderful hymn, How Great Thou Art, but I can't do it all. Among the not notable renditions of How Great Thou Art are recordings by the Blackwood Brothers Quartet, Dixie Carter, Tammy Wynette, or 1969 album Inspiration, Charlie Daniels, Tennessee er Ernie Ford, Backed by the Jordanians, Burrow Eyes, Alan Jackson, Dolly Parton, Elvis Presley, Roy Rogers, George Beverly Shea, Carrie Underwood, and Connie Smith. The song won Presley a Grammy Award for the Best Sacred Performance in 1967. Now come on, give me a break. Elvis Presley is singing about how great thou art with all the, the nonsense and... and, and and sin that that man done and another Grammy 1974 for best inspiration performance non-classical see when you get a great hymn like this and how great there are and and amazing grace well what we're gonna do is we're gonna sucker the Baptist we're gonna make an album and ooh, isn't it great that Elvis Presley sung a hymn so he must be saved and he must be in heaven today well According to James, by the background of Elvis Presley and Dolly Parton, I, I don't know as far as salvation. And for Elvis's live performance album, re recorded live on stage in Memphis. So, so, can you just imagine Elvis singing, Oh Lord my God, and mean it from the heart? If you read the book from his bodyguards. And I have read his book. Like the creation around this, do we just ever sit back and consider God in his majesty? Do we ever just take a time out and not to be sitting in a corner and not in a school or by a parent, but do we on our own just take a time out and this revelation of ourselves, of God the creator? Do we ever just take that moment when we celebrate the Lord's uh, Supper in a church? Do we ever just go back to those moments that last 24 hours of Jesus Christ, how he suffered and died and bled, that we may have eternal life. Do we ever just give God the silent time alone? We don't. I don't. The first commandment, 
There are people I've dealt with. Oh, I keep the commandments. We don't. I can't. I'm a born again Bible believing Christian Baptist of King James 1611 Bible, and I sing hymns. And I cannot say I keep the commandments because I don't keep the first one. We stumble over the first command. And the first commandment, let me, is to keep God first all the time. All the time. He said all the time twice. All the time, all the time, keeping God first. And when do we ever do that? We don't. Verse 2 is added by Hine. Sounds a little nature buff. Forest glades, birds singing, mountain gland. I mean, it's a. But God created it all. And is he saying that God is in the trees and the rocks and the animals? Is that where he's pointing to? I look at verse 2 and it's like, um, I've dealt with people. Oh, God's, I, I go into the into the, uh, the the lake to fish and God's with me. I go off into the rocks and the trees and the forest and God is with me. And that's the impression I get at verse 2. Dealing with people. Now, stanza 3. I don't know if I can read it or not. By copyright law, but stanza three has the gospel spelled out. God, his son, not sparing, died. I can't even fathom it. On the cross, my burden, he bled and died that my sin may be removed. How often do I think about that in my life? Stanza 4. The second advent of Jesus Christ. My God. is calling Jesus Christ. God and God Jesus. You will not find this hymn in a Jehovah Witness assembly hall. Because they completely deny the deity that Jesus is God and God is Jesus. And how great thou art. Proclaims Jesus God. And here I get a little antsy with the chorus. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. And then we do it again. We repeat it twice. And we see the modern hymn songs today that you got seven words and you do it five times. And this is 1886-1953. A repetition. Jesus said we're not to use repetition when we pray. Vain repetition. Ought we all to be singing our hymns with repetition? The same thing over and over and over? When we say, well, the cherubim, holy, 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 they're not singing. They're saying And am I a pickle to the hymns that repeat every, any line over and over, even twice? And if it, when you look at the modern music today, it's the same thing over and over. I, if God would ever give me a church and I would ever pass that church, I would sing stanza one, two, three, four, and then sing the chorus as stanza five. Let's see what else we got in this hymn. We've got God. The Son, capital S. We've got Christ. But I don't see Jesus. And we know who the Son is. We know who Christ is. But we couldn't throw Jesus in here? Why, if Acts 4.12, there is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. If that name is Jesus Christ, and at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. 
and we have a Christian hymnals that cannot fit at least one Jesus in them. You say this is a great hymn. I did say it's a great hymn. Imagine if you would take your Bible and cut Jesus out of it, which modern Bibles have. There was no Jesus in your Bible. Jesus said one time to the disciples in, in the Gospel of John, and I'm not going to quote it, but he said, I've come in my own name and you have not received me, but when he comes in his name, that you will receive. Paul says there's a, other, another Jesus is. I've been saved since 1989, and, and you figure it out. I don't know how many years. 2017. But Jesus Christ saved my soul. Jesus Christ died on that cross. Jesus Christ arose from the grave. Jesus Christ is the name that will be named in heaven. And call me a pickle. He cannot be named in the hymns. I'm going to say this is a keeper by a dear Christian friend of mine. It's a keeper. I wish I could go on into a little more but copyright law I don't know how far I can do but as far as I want you to know that this is a great song. I want you to see the stanzas. One like I said this seems you know foresty and God's everywhere. And I want you to see that the gospel is in verse 3, the second advent in verse 4, and salvation is wrought. And there it is. How great thou art. How great God is.